Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 16, brought to you by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Everybody, welcome back to Knowledge 16. This is theCUBE. theCUBE is SiliconANGLE's flagship product. We go out to the events, we try to find that signal and extract it from the noise. Jason Wojan is here. He's a longtime CUBE guest, uh, formerly of Cloud Sherpas, now with Accenture. Jason, it's great to see you again. Thank you very much, I'm happy to be here. So you got a little spring in your step. You, you know, know it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> new, new chapter, you know, like you said, same story though. Yep, so uh, our story began really back in 2009 uh, with a company called Navigus, a very boutique ServiceNow consulting company. Um, you know, really focused on helping customers adopt that initial implementation of ServiceNow. Uh, you know, we, we ended that journey with 30 people getting acquired by Cloud Sherpas, uh, 1-1-2013, and, and moving that to a uh, couple hundred people, and uh, now moving to November of last year being acquired by Accenture, and now over 1,100 people dedicated to the ServiceNow practice globally, and uh, the single largest concentration of ServiceNow certifications across the globe, over 800. So Accenture is going for a serious integration. We've been talking this week about, you guys aren't messing around, nope. taking Cloud Sherpas, going hard aligning with the industries. Can you talk about the integration? How's it going? What's that been like? Yeah, so we started our integration in November of 2015. We completed our integration in April of this year, April 1st actually. Um, it's gone very well. We've, uh, we're continuing to, to uh, hold a lot of the core tenants that allowed us to be very successful from a Cloud Sherpa's perspective. Our regionalized selling teams, our demand management teams, et cetera, they're going to be and, and are a part of our go forward service now uh, practice in Accenture. Um, but on top of that, obviously aligning by industry, aligning to those client account teams that uh, Accenture's uh, so known for, and, uh, and then bringing forward the first industry offerings uh, in the ServiceNow space. We're starting with retail, um, higher ed, financial services, media and telecom, and uh, I'll just say that that's going to be a massive opportunity for us. Uh, it lines squarely up with the way that Accenture does business and uh, it allows us to take and distill that intellectual property that we've been building in the ServiceNow platform since 2009 and to aggregate that by industry so that customers can get a much better context from start to middle to finish of their journey in ServiceNow. Can you talk a little bit more about the sort of value that you're adding uh, on top of the ServiceNow platform? Can you maybe give us some examples? Yeah, so um, there's a number of different spaces, but we, like, we try to line it up the same way ServiceNow does. So there's the IT service management component, and of course, in our retail uh, industry framework, for example, uh, we've taken uh, pre-configured, uh, uh, you know, routinely covered aspects of, of working in IT within a retail organization, things like uh, in a franchise model, obviously territory management's very important, uh, being able to have some transparency into those territories when you have a point of sale down or some sort of technology in the store is very important. But once you get that employee self-service portal in a store manager's hands, now you can connect to corporate risk, you can connect to legal, you connect to HR, you give them a single pane of glass to do those things in. And we're finding a lot of traction in things like uh, the foodborne illness workflows and the accident injury, you know, theft prevention in stores. And you know, if you think about that, that sounds really neat. In fact, uh, there was a restaurant that we were working with where we helped them increase their foodborne illness by 147% their first month of implementation. And the, the reason it was is an artificial number. The, the, the stores weren't faxing the forms in, uh, but they were uh, willing to submit a digital workflow. And while that's just simply an expansion of a service catalog, it, uh, it's really meaningful to the store and it actually helps that store managers uh, a day and it helps them be much more efficient. So these are, are customizations that you're, you're creating that wouldn't come out of the box with ServiceNow? Is no, that right? they're all part of the ServiceNow platform. I mean, that's the great thing about a platform is it can be near anything you want it to be. Um, what we're really trying to do in the, in the uh, frameworks is offer a context. So here's your ITSM component, here's your IT operations management component, and here's your services management component or your business service management component, and here's that journey kind of cradle to grave. Okay, so you're accelerating the adoption, essentially, is really what that's all about, is that's that right? That's right. Okay. And now you're really coming at it from the two, the two axes, too, because essentially, if I recall, from, from prior life, you know, you've got the, the horizontals yep. uh, by, by type of discipline, then you've got the verticals by industry. You got it. You guys come in at, at, a, at a retail ITSM overlap, but then now you've got a path to go to other, other verticals and other horizontals. You got it, and, and of course, you know, the value is right across those intersection points. And our real value as an organization back within Accenture is that platform focus, that, that lens being applied to that two-axis model 
for the platform through the platform. And then the other thing we keep hearing time and time again is, is, is Accenture is happy to take on the higher value activities around change management and transformation and, and the, the, the processes and the people aspects uh, and not necessarily you know, run the IT for some of these right. things. Right, so what's unique about Accenture is it's not just the, the, the better practices and the transformation of the, the, the process consulting, but it's also the as a service offerings and the practitioners offering those services. And in fact, we've been very successful with uh, utilizing ServiceNow within Accenture. That's also part of my responsibility is to help um, Accenture acquire ServiceNow as the platform for their business services. All right, so what about this notion of the third estate? We've seen Frank talk about, you know, you got the, all the processes around ERP, you got all the processes around CRM, and then you got service management sort of encompassing them and reaching its tentacles in. How is that resonating with, with, with clients? You guys sort of are, should be agnostic to the technology you are. I mean, you're maybe not so much, but the company is. I'm not is. at all. <laughs> 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 but, but, but your firm is, and that's one of the brand, you know, that's what part of your promise to customers is that, We'll get the outcome right. That's right. We'll figure out the technology. So, how is that resonating with, with customers? Bringing that service management capability across the enterprise is that real yet? Is it still? You know, it, it really is. It helps customers set a context. I mean, context is everything, especially when you're dealing with a cloud platform, because those cloud platforms can be very austere in in what they're capable of, right? I mean, you know, take the whiteboard and let's start drawing something on it. Um, giving a customer context of what they can achieve, helping them understand that there's you know, three legs to the journey or you know, those types of things are really important. But you know, at the end of the day, when you're getting down into the service management or business service management, you care about workflows. And workflows, you know, I kind of look at that as a kind of a ground and pound kind of thing, right? Every workflow is unique. Um, there are many to one re relationships within workflows and departments and otherwise, and you really have to be a student of, of how work gets done for a company to, to modernize those. So how about the ITOM action? What's going on with uh, uh, IT operations management? Yeah, so obviously ServiceNow has uh, made several acquisitions in that space. They're investing in the platform in that space. Across Accenture, we have a much broader cloud strategy and we're aligning and have aligned the ServiceNow platform in the ITOM space to our overall cloud strategy and are going to market in that way to make sure that we're really being complementary to ServiceNow's story. So, we sometimes call it inter-clouding, right? It's like this Put it in the cloud, we're putting everything in the cloud, so they got a zillion clouds, you yep. know, SaaS and, and, and all infrastructure clouds and so forth. How do you see that playing out with customers in terms of how they're orchestrating? Are they going to use ServiceNow to do that? I mean, today they're using things like Chef and, and Puppet. Um, how does that shake out in, in your client base? So actually, we talked about this a couple years ago. It's this notion of there's many clients that we're working with, and I'm thinking of one in particular where they have 35 different cloud applications in their environment. And so you kind of look at it and you say, gosh, you know, uh, I understand the value of cloud here, but you're still very silicized in what you're doing. 35 clouds you know, seems like a very distributed cloud environment. It would seem like we could kind of pull that together in a much more integrated way. We're starting to see that. We're starting to see customers looking to consolidate to get to a much more seamless version. You know, that, that enthusiasm to go bring all the clouds in is, uh, is starting to, to wane a bit and they're looking to consolidate and make sure they're getting the value across their investments. And more importantly, to make sure they don't have a lot of overlaps. Many of the tools do, and if you have 35 clouds, you probably have 35 overlaps. Hmm. So, thinking about, okay, you talked about the, the acquisition and the sort of integration just April. So now what? what? What should we be looking for in terms of signs of progress with regard to where you guys are taking this? So for us, it's all about keeping our customer satisfaction stable at its very high rate. It's about adding many more certifications. In fact, first quarter to second quarter, we added 130 more certifications alone across our practice. It's pushing our resource pools up above 1,500 across the globe. It's investing in new regions and new territories, and it's doubling down on our accelerators and our industry frameworks. It's huge. So let's talk, talk more about the certifications. What, what, add some color to that. What, what yeah, so we're, we've uh, invested heavily in our training practice over the years. We actually uh, have the highest concentration of certified trainers uh, that exist outside of ServiceNow. And so we've used that as a factory model to help our resources get better and help us scale and add more depth within the regions. Many of our resources carry three and four certifications per person across you know, different aspects of, of ServiceNow. Everything from implementation specialist to system administrator certifications to discovery, service watch, PA, so on and so forth. But you're doing your own certifications, but you're also building the training practice to get the certifications into the customers as well. You got it. 
What, what was the head count at Cloud Sherpas at the time of that? So the total head count was, was about 1,200 at, at Cloud Sherpas. In our ServiceNow practice, we were about 150. 150? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's right, because you guys did other stuff with, what, was it Salesforce and Google? Salesforce, Google, and ServiceNow. So those are big three. Yep. Three lines of business. So it was 150 in the service ServiceNow. So how many people, roughly, in order of magnitude, in Accenture, sort of, as you sort of transfer that knowledge, will care about ServiceNow? There are over 1,100 people today globally that have ServiceNow skills and certifications. So an order of magnitude greater than yeah. what you had exactly. prior. And I bet you're spending a lot of time flying to partner meetings around specific <laughs> verticals and, and really kind of bringing the religion to all those different, different groups. So for us, it's about educating and getting a common understanding on what the platform is capable of across the, the body of Accenture so that when somebody finds or is discussing a problem that can be solved or improved with ServiceNow, they know what that opportunity looks like, they know what our capabilities are, and they can make that intersection on our Light behalf. Light goes off. So it's interesting, and <laughs> we've been talking about swim lanes all week. Three years ago I said Salesforce and, 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 and ServiceNow on a collision course because there's, it's a platform and, and uh, you know, there's just so many problems it can solve. How do you guys work with your colleagues on the Salesforce side, and do you see what we're seeing? Do you agree with that? That just seems to be getting a little fuzzier in terms of where one picks up and the other leaves off? And you know, what's interesting is where I live, it's not as fuzzy as I think it looks from an analyst perspective. Yeah, so explain that. Um, and what we're finding is more often it's a case of integration. If you're working with a large enterprise, they probably have Salesforce, and they probably have ServiceNow as well and they probably need those to work together in a seamless way. We are finding in those customers that we do, it is important for us to push up a little higher in our approaches and get to that advisory layer so that we can help them understand where to best rationalize the different features and functionalities. And that ends up looking a lot like management consulting, actually. So, we should think about this the same way we, we thought about Workday, is that right? Yeah. I mean, but for, for a while it looked kind of fuzzy. Well, Workday's and, a little different for us. So our, our play with Workday would be more of a wraparound of Workday from a portal perspective, from a workflow perspective, et cetera. So we'd be working in more of a complementary way that way uh, and more of a wrapper approach. From right. a, a Salesforce, a ServiceNow perspective, it would be more of a bi-directional communication between instances or between, uh, between uh, tools approach. And, and how about the Google play? I mean, people running their businesses on Google Docs. Now maybe that's more SMB, but is there a play, a wraparound play, or an integration play so there? We've done as well? a lot of integrations with uh, Google, both from, from a calendar perspective, from a drive perspective, um, also in, in some of the Google um, for apps, Google for business types of, uh, Google for work types of offerings as well. Um, it's, it's use case driven, so you know, I, I wouldn't say that uh, it's, it's something that we're finding that we're just wrapping around or there's a, there's a standard play there for us. Um, every customer has a slightly different, unique and need in that space, but we have done those integrations. Much more common for us to be working with, uh, integrating with a Workday or a Salesforce, Salesforce than a Google. Awesome. All right, give us the bumper sticker on Knowledge 16 from your perspective, Jason. Uh, it's been a great event for us. Um, we had the uh, single largest presence of uh, trainers here for the pre-conference. Uh, uh, one of the highest presences at the CreatorCon event here uh, towards the end. Uh, we've gotten new MVPs added to the ServiceNow community while we're here, and they've had a chance to be a part of, uh, of that community of practice. Um, and we're announcing our industry framework. So that's our big push right now from an IP perspective. We think that's going to be really important to clients. It's going to immediately establish a lowest common denominator of where they should go in the platform and uh, help them see around a lot of corners that, uh, that others have before them you know, have solved or seen themselves. And you had your customer event last night, is that right? I or? was, yeah. Yeah, how was that? It was great. We had uh, over 700 customers attend uh, and a beautiful view of Las Vegas. So. Nice. Saw, some of, saw some of the pictures coming out on social. It looked great. like a beautiful view. Sorry, I forgot to invite you. I apologize. <laughs> no, we usually <laughs> make it over. It's all right. You know, we elbow our way in, but we were. We Next got, time. We got caught another one. All right, Jason, <laughs> thanks very much for coming back at theCUBE. It was great to see you again. Thank you. Congratulations again. All right, keep it right here, everybody. We're in day two of Knowledge 16. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle. We'll be back right after this. Every once in a while, a true 